In 1840, the railway came to Swindon, and by 1842, the railworks had been built and was in operation by January 1843. The town began to grow, and over the years, several local industries, besides the railworks, prospered. Sadly, during the last few years, all of these industries, including the railworks, have closed down. The face of Swindon and its industries have changed and now include commerce and high technology on many of the industrial estates and in office blocks in and around the town. W.D. and H.O. Wills Tobacco Company bought 26 acres of land at Colborne Street to build a cigarette factory, sports club and playing fields. As the factory was being built, it quickly became a local landmark with its red Calibrook brickwork and its striking 120-foot chimney. The late Mr. Arthur Crouch, a local bricklayer from the village of South Marston, helped build the chimney and said for the first 35 feet, Scaffolding was built at the inside and outside of the chimney. The rest of the chimney was scaffolded and built from the inside, and when completed, Mr. Crouch was lowered on a bosun's chair down the outside to fix the cleats to which the lightning conductor was fitted. For his efforts, Wills gave Mr. Crouch a cheque for the princely sum of £20 for fixing the cleats. The factory was completed in 1914 and immediately taken over by the government to be turned into an ammunition factory. Ammonium nitrate was transported about 300 yards by aerial ropeway into the premises from the nearby Stratton filling factory and the playing field area of the sports club was a mass of railway sidings. About 60 wagons of ammunition left the factory daily during World War I. The factory returned to tobacco production in 1918 and over the following 22 years employed over 1,100 employees at its peak until mechanisation and high technology have reduced the number of employees over the years to the present 200. The factory building was extended in 1929 to increase paper material stores and Hogshead Department and again in 1974 to incorporate the now removed Cabot Experimental Primary Line. Being bordered by the London to Bristol Railway Line made it possible for Wheels to have its own sidings with two lines terminating in the warehouse where up to eight wagons could be loaded under cover. To shunt the wagons about, Wills had their own Muir Hill petrol engine locomotive. In 1927, when all the tobacco and materials transported in and out of the factory was by rail. In 1936, Wills replaced this locomotive with a Fowler 040 diesel mechanical 40 horsepower locomotive, which was used up to the 29th of October 1980 when it made its last shunt and the sidings were closed, with the transportation of all tobacco and materials now being carried out by road transport. The locomotive, tracks and points were given to the Swindon and Cricklade Railway Society. <laughs> Most days of the week, lorries arrive at the factory to deliver tobacco and to take away cigarettes. The tobacco is brought from around the world from countries like Brazil, Canada, India, Korea, Pakistan, Taiwan, Malawi, Tanzania and Thailand. It is then stored in government bonded warehouses. 
Cases of tobacco leaf from many of the mentioned countries are selected to make a blend by our chemists at Bristol who know the sugar and nicotine content of each case from samples. All the cases of tobacco leaf to form the blend are opened and stacked on mobile platforms. Then a second case is stacked on top of the first until all 40 cases to the blend are opened and stacked. Each blend will be made up of about 8,664 kilos of leaf and about 2,596 kilos of stem. After moisture has been added, 14 to 15 million cigarettes can be made. When the tobacco leaf arrives, it is dry and very hard and the first process is to put it into the more conditioner and soften it by adding water and steam and increase the moisture content from 11% to 14%. When the door of the moor is closed, it forms an airtight seal and probes are forced down through the blocks of tobacco. Then all the air in the moor is evacuated through the probes. Next, water and steam are fed into the chamber which penetrate right into the centre of the tobacco to make it soft and pliable. This takes 20 to 25 minutes. The leaf is now taken to the three GTL feeders which breaks down the blocks of leaf and feeds them onto a common conveyor band which is part of the mixing process. The leaf continues into the rotary conditioner which adds steam and water and raises the moisture content to 19%. Conveyors now take the leaf to the laminar silos, where it is stored until needed for cutting. The laminar silos are another part of the mixing process. By layering the leaf, then using it from one end produces the blend. When the cutting machines need leaf, the doffer rollers at the end of the silo start feeding out the leaf where it is transported into the leg cutting machines. The soft moistened leaf is compacted into block form called a cheese and driven towards the high speed six knife cutting drum. The leaf is cut at a rate of 37 cuts to the inch by the continuous sharpened knives and falls onto a conveyor to be taken to where the stem is added. The stem is removed from the leaf in the country of origin and is cased and bought separately and added to a blend in the proportions as determined by the chemist to make a certain blend. The ratio is 13 cases of stem to 40 cases of leaf. The hard dry stem is fed onto a conveyor at a controlled rate by the stem feeders and is conveyed to the Lewisville pipe. Here steam and water is added. This takes the moisture content up from 11 to 33 percent, which makes the stem soft and pliable and ready for the stem crushers. The stem is forced between heavy rollers, which crush and flatten it for the next stage of the process, stem cutting. The Halney stem cutting machines pack the soft flattened stem into a block and the high speed cutting drum cuts the stem at 120 cuts per inch. The cut stem now passes through the double wetting operation where jets of water soak the cut stem and increase its moisture content up from 33 to 45 percent which makes the stem swell up. A conveyor takes a stem into a leg drive where the moisture content is reduced to 25 percent but the stem retains its swollen state. Now the stem moves on to a classifier where a volume of air lifts up the cut stem along the ducting into a stem silo. 
stem particles that do not get lifted are returned via the heavy stem return band to be fed back into the system at the Honey stem cutting machine to be correctly processed again. The stem silos, those smaller than the leaf silos, work on the same principle by layering the cut stem. It mixes it. Now the stem at 21% moisture is ready to be mixed with the leaf and this is achieved by feeding the stem through a metering tube and by feeding the leaf over a weigh band which will control the addition of stem to the correct quantity. With the leaf and stem blended together they travel through a lead dryer then into a lead cooler to dry the blend down to 14.8 or 15.5% moisture content according to the brand being manufactured. The cut tobacco rag now moves on to the tobacco stores where it is stored in trolley bins at 70 kilos per bin waiting to be used in the tobacco feeders. The trolley bins of tobacco rag are pushed onto the tobacco feeders where they are tipped up and the tobacco rag is fed out at a controlled thickness under the tobacco feeder suction tubes. When a cigarette making machine calls for tobacco, it is sucked up the tubes into the hopper on the making machines. This Moman's Market making machine manufactures 2,500 woodbine plain cigarettes a minute. The tobacco rag is taken from the hopper by an elevator band and is then transferred by vacuum and is held on the underside of the moving perforated steel band by the vacuum. The perforated steel band transports the tobacco rag suspended underneath through the trimmer discs which trim off the excess and deposit the tobacco onto the already printed paper. Each paper bobbin is 5,000 metres in length and will make 78,125 woodbine cigarettes. After the paper has been printed and the tobacco deposited onto it, the edges are lifted up to form a tube of paper around the tobacco. One paper edge has paste applied before being folded down and sealed under the heater. The cigarette rod has now been formed and if not cut, the cigarette will be just over three miles long. Next, the cigarette rod passes through the radioactive source unit where the density of the cigarette rod is constantly monitored. Any deviation from the set standard is rectified by the vertical movement of the trimmer disc, controlled via the electrometer and the hydraulic unit. A rotary knife cuts the cigarette rod into individual cigarettes, which are then transported along the capture band into the catcher where they are collated and fed into the skips. Each skip holds 1,370 cigarettes and after examination the crew attendant places them on the Teleflex conveyor to be transported into the packing room. The cigarette rod on a filter cigarette is made the same way as on plain cigarettes, with the filter rod being added later. The filter rods are manufactured in other ITR factories and are manually fed into the filter hopper on the Class A making machine. Each filter rod is cut into three sections and a section of filter rod is placed between two lengths of cigarette rod. Three parts are joined together by wrapping adjoining paper around the centre of the sections, making it into two cigarettes joined at the filter. A rotary knife cuts through the filter, separating the two cigarettes with a series of suction drums. The rear cigarette is reversed before joining the mass flow conveyor to the tray filler. Trays which hold 3,750 cigarettes are placed onto the Mark 16 tray filler unit, where they are automatically filled. After examination, the trays are placed into a coach to be transported into the packing room. The new generation Honey Proto making machines have the very latest in electronics and technology, making cigarettes at 6,000 a minute with their own computer 
quality is constantly being monitored and with the on the run bobbin changing facility. This machine is built to make king size cigarettes continuously for hours without stopping. On the protos, the filter rods are fed overhead from the APHIS filter rod feeder. This is fed in turn by the Tudor tray and loader. Cardboard trays of filter rods are placed into a carrier and loaded onto the intake band of the Tudor. Here they are inverted and the filter rods flow along the conveyor and down into the APHIS. The APHIS guide the rods in single file down into the rotary magazine where compressed air blows the filter rods along the overhead tubes to the waiting making machines. Woodbine cigarettes on the Telefax conveyor circulate the packing room. When required, the skips are removed and launched into the packing machine hopper. Once in the hopper, the cigarettes filter down the veins until 20 cigarettes are pushed out by the plungers into the turrets. Soft end detectors press lightly on the ends of the cigarettes as they pass into the channels and the cigarette mist detectors. Conveyors take the cigarettes along the channels to the foil unit where foil is fed through the embossing head to the knives which cut the foil before it is wrapped around the cigarettes. Now the foil tucker folds in the side, bottom and top folds, completing the foil bundle. The pre-shaped slides are sucked down from the slide feed and pushed out under the plungers into the pocket chain. Once the slide is formed in the pocket chain, the foil bundle is added to it, then the ends of the slide is folded up as it moves along. Shells from the shell chute are fed out, opened and positioned on the knife pieces. Now the overhead ejector conveyor pushes the slide into the shell until the now formed packet is closed, then ejects it. The packets are now entering the GD to be wrapped in polypropylene film. First, a 1.5mm strip of film is cut from a bobbin transferred by suction to join the film which has a line of hot melt wax on to stick the two together. A horseshoe shape cut is made in the film followed by the final cuts before it has the packet pushed through it. With the film around the packet, now the folds are put in, then into the heaters to seal, before the packets are collated for the parcel section. Here, a pre-printed real feed wrapper paper is used, adhesive is applied, then the wrapper paper is cut and folded around the collated 10 packets of cigarettes. Heaters are used to dry out the adhesive then the packet leaves the GD on its journey to the stretch wrap machines. Wild Woodbine cigarette packaging has changed over the years and for many years Woodbine filter cigarettes have been manufactured at Swindon and packed on a Mullins crush proof packing machine. Alan and Tony are checking the quality on one of the player brands we also manufacture. King size cigarettes are packed on the FZ350 packing machine. These German machines produce 250 packets of 20 cigarettes a minute. The trays of 3,000 cigarettes are automatically unloaded into the hopper of the FZ and travel through a familiar route to the foil unit. The crush proof packet is made up on the machine from a pre-cut blank. Extra strengthening comes from the frame, which is cut from a reel of card and placed over the foil bundle. The blank is fed down from the stack and passes under the plunger, where it is pressed into the folding turret. As the turret revolves, the blank is being folded to form a packet. The foil bundle and frame is added, then the packet is partly closed. The adhesive is applied to the side flaps and the packet is completed by being lifted into the transfer and drying drums. Now the packets are conveyed to the GD where they are wrapped in film, collated into bundles of 200 cigarettes and wrapped in paper before they are transported away by the Ling Conveyor air cushion system to the stretch wrap machine. Looks like someone's leaving. David is having a photo call 
and Christine is cutting all the ties with him. What's this game called? Ring a ring of roses and we all fall down in a heap. I understand this is an old Swindon custom. All the 200 bundles go through the stretch wrap machines and are wrapped into 3,000 and 6,000 parcels. The 200 bundles are collated and diverted into one of five lanes in turn. When 30 bundles are collated into all five lanes, they are lifted up and pushed through the tension polythene. Then the end folds are sealed by heaters. Their journey is all downhill now into the warehouse where they are stacked on pallets and spiral wrapped with polythene to secure them on the journey to the regional distribution centres and finally the retail outlets. In this corner of the cutting depot is a splitting machine which recycles tobacco from reject cigarettes. Trolley bins full of reject cigarettes are tipped into the hopper. The cigarettes are elevated up onto the vibratory corrugated conveyor where they are lined up. Now they are deposited onto a wet band which runs through a water trough. This wets the underside of the cigarettes before it goes into the pressure and serrated rollers. This makes the cigarettes split along their wet side. They then pass over a sieve where the tobacco and paper are separated. Throughout the factory, maintenance and repairs are carried out by the engineering department. The factory has a main fitting and machine shop with other smaller bays dotted around for the fitters, electricians and carpenters to work from. During the process, quality is monitored by the laboratory assistants and patrol examiners who take samples and carry out a wide range of tests and examinations to ensure that quality is maintained. Today the restaurant staff are putting on something special with decorated tables and staff dressed in old time costumes. A glass of wine complements the day's special meal of steak followed by strawberries and cream. Now it's all over, this is what the restaurant staff do in the kitchen. front of the factory there is a reception area with a security office with all their surveillance equipment. Medical and personal departments are at one end of the main corridor with management offices and general office at the other. The old sports club building was replaced with a larger building in 1971 when WH Smith and Hambro Life joined to share the facilities and was enlarged again in 1983 to its present size. This includes changing rooms, squash courts, skittle alleys, snooker room, dance hall, dining room as well as special function rooms. All in all a very impressive club.
closing, closing or you're all being thrown up. But before you go, I would just like to say on behalf of myself and the other managers, and I think the foreman as well, thank you to all of you for the way you've behaved over the last well, many years, but in particular since that dreadful day on March, May the 7th when we gave you the, uh, the news. I'm full of admiration for the way you, you have conducted yourselves through a very, very trying period. Um, those of you who are going on to Hartcliffe and Nottingham, try and bring them up to our standard. Those of you who, those of you who are taking the opportunity to, for new careers, we all wish you the, the, the very best. Um, I hope that you will not dwell on what's happened in the past, because that's no good to any of you. But look back on your time with Wills with pleasure, but look forward and get on with it, because I'm sure you'll all be very successful. Um, it is a sad day. The sun's shining. You're going to leave here with the whole, the whole future in front of you. Go and enjoy it, and don't regret it. It's no, it won't do you any good at all cursing. It won't get you any further forward. Go and enjoy life, be successful, and I hope I'll read in the paper, apart from me throwing out the press this morning, which I'm sure you will find a banner headline, and I'd like to know who it was who rang them up to say what was going on. Uh, but uh, we may get, we may, or I may attract some unpleasantness in the paper this evening, which is unfortunate. But I think it is a, a private what's happening this morning. It's not for the general public. But all the, all the very best to you all. Thank you very much for the way you've all behaved so splendidly. And just finally, thank Garden Merchant for the exceptional way they looked yeah. after yeah. us.
Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. 